night. Welcome back to the Pioneer Side. I'm your host, Aaron Cooney. I'm going to jump right into it. Men's basketball fared pretty well over their seven games as they end up with a winning record. Point Park, the women, though, had a couple matchups themselves. They would take on Fairmont State the exact same day, the first game of that night on the 15th of November, that Tuesday a couple weeks ago. Unfortunately, they could not pull out the win there, lose 72-61, to fall to 2-2 two and two on the season. Peterkin with 16 points, and Schneider, Caitlin Schneider just went off for 25 points. It seems like one player can beat this Pioneer team if they need to. And then the next day, they three games in a row for them. They take on the 16th Penn State Fayette, made a visit. Big win for Point Park, 91-29. That's what you call padding the stats there. Maria Boshkova, 15 points. Sandin with 14. Uh, the whole bench came on. 14 of the 15 players that played figured in at some kind of scoring. Uh, the next day, they took on LaRoche, the 17th that Thursday. Finish up, they would win that one, 58-51. to Johnson Peterkin with 21 points. Austin with 12. And that would bring us to that Saturday rematch. Point Park taking on Mount Vernon Nazarene. That was their first game of the season. We were there with the highlights. There you see Coach Tony Grenick warming up the squad, getting his message in, and they're going to start right off. April Austin on fire right off the beginning. Gets the ball back. The kick out from Johnson Peterkin drains that one. They were up early in the first half. Just a great first half for Point Park, but it was the best shooting half we've seen from them. There's Kristen Vezzelani. She put one in, but the Cougars would come right back from Mount Vernon Nazarene. There you'll see a missed shot, and Courtney Swart just hanging out on the back door wide open. She cashes in with the easy rebound and put back. Point Park would come right back, though. Shartner wide open for the three. Drano. Point Park up big. She finished with two of five from the three-point line, 12 points. And then you see Alexis Harkins for Mount Vernon Nazarene. She's going to put this one in cap off an 8-2 run going into the half. Point Park with lead, 31-27 as they made a bit of a comeback. And then you see the Fletcher show starts. Sierra Fletcher drains the three there coming off the play. But now I want you to this, but this, this is drawn up. Design play. Shartner gets the inbounds pass, comes all the way around up to the top of the key, drains the three. Point Park still ahead, clinging on to a lead. But here's where things just go south. There's Ike Holt for Mount Vernon Nazarene. They put one in, and then you're going to see a great play coming from Sierra, Sierra Fletcher. And she's going to play the artful dodge right here. Pick the pocket. You don't see that too often. Pick the pocket of April Austin and just step back, let the three fly. Drains it, puts that one home. Mount Vernon now up 47-41. Point Park trying to make a bit of a comeback. Here comes Kristen Beatty as she brings it all the way down the court. Puts up the layup off the glass, gets to go. Point Park within two but they just did not have enough, could not shoot from the field. As you're going to see, Ansley Kraus down low. Uh, she seals the deal there. Mount Vernon wins this game 55-48. They sweep the season series with Point Park with the win 55-48. We're going to go ahead and bring in Matt Desmond, our women's basketball analysis. And Matt, you got into it. There's a couple games you knew they are going to beat Penn State Fayette. Uh, LaRoche was a good game, but the thing that troubles me with this Mount Vernon game is just the way, that whole second half, the way they came out flat. Yeah, you saw that Point Park Pioneer team, and they shot around 49% in that first half, which is terrific for the Pioneers. But they had to play two halves of basketball, and we've we seen that the whole year, two tails of uh, two halves, and they've been unable to do that this year. And the Pioneers shot 15% in that second half, and that's not going to win you ball games. And it, it, certainly when they get to the foul line, you think they connect. They, they've been doing horrendous from the foul line as well. I think shooting out of 46 or 47 percent this season, they really need to improve on that as well. And they need to do better when uh, Jocelyn Peterkin's out of the game. They need to have some valuable minutes from some some of the other ladies like uh, Bosch Koba. I think Coach Granick needs to get her in the lineup a lot more. I think she showed a lot of life when they played a Penn State Fayette team. Maybe not the best of teams, but she just got an opportunity in there. And I think uh, Coach Granick has to take that opportunity and give that to uh, Bosch Koba. He mentioned the free throw shooting. Yeah, just an abysmal 49% for a team, that a whole team we're talking about, to shoot under 50% from the free throw line. You talk about shooting woes. You got it there. That's the bottom of the conference Point Park is. And they're also pretty bad on the field goal side as well, only shooting 39% as a team from the field. That's fifth in the AMC as well. Wilberforce and Fisher, the only teams lower than that. And Matt, yeah, something needs to change for this Point Park team. There's got to be something that Greenwich can do to fire these ladies up. Yeah, I really think you, you look at the Point Park Pioneers and Peterkin, she's a really good person to have down un, under the hoop, down low for the Pioneers, and then they dish it outside to April Austin. But I really think they're going to have to find another person to get those points in there. Uh, Kristen Beatty is a person I like to drive that ball to the hoop, uh, draw some attention, maybe uh, get some fouls that way. But, I mean, they're really going to have to take advantage when they get to the foul line. The charity stripe, that's really, really, really where they have to make the improvements, and I think they'll do that. Yeah, they need those freebies, and you talk about maybe some can step in well they might get that because Ashley Campbell's going to join the team 
uh, after finishing up her season with the volleyball team, she joined that uh, the game or the day after Point Park lost in that matchup to Indiana Tech. So she's with them. She's been practicing with them. She might make her debut here, hopefully against Fisher. And, and what does that mean for Point Park, adding in another you know already deep roster as it is? Well, I think that's huge for the Point Park Pioneers. You, you look at Ashley Campbell, the transfer from Butler uh, Community College, and she played alongside uh, Katrice Zavitsky. So I think there's going to be some chemistry there. And I think once Campbell gets in that lineup, she's going to be able to provide some points. She averaged uh, 13 and a half points over at BC3. So I think she had some uh, nice chemistry into the lineup and some nice experience. And I think the Pioneers are going to value a lot of uh, – of time and, and uh, scoring opportunities for uh, Campbell getting in the li lineup. And Coach Credick definitely has his handfuls of making decisions for that lineup. And Matt, thank you very much for joining us here on the Pioneer Sideline. You can hear Matt uh, doing all the color commentary for all the women's games all throughout the season on 670 AM WPPJ and the MSA Sports Network. They're taking on Fisher on Thursday as well. They'll make that trip up to Boston and they'll also finish up Saturday before they go on break for a little bit, taking on a Rio Grande team as they make the trip there into Ohio. Matt, thank you again. As always, we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, big debate. Who do you want to see in the national championship game for college football? Stick around.